everyone. We're gonna redo our bands and I'm gonna show you how I set them up. This is fiction, in case you haven't met her. And we're hoping she works out and she hangs about. So we're feeding her. She's pretty nice. She's not great with kids. She's kind of aggressive with the children. So, but otherwise seems to be good. She's definitely a hunter. So we'll get her a breakaway collar. Um, but I'm, we're hoping that she helps keep away some of the other strays and the gophers, although they were bullying her this morning, the other cat strays. So she may not be the alpha that um, we hoped. <laughs> but otherwise she's doing really good. So anyway, back to the bins. We're, I'm gonna take out and show you on this bin, um, the greens, they're very picked over. You see some of them are completely just stalks now. And you'll see the bin has sunk probably about that much and how we refilled the bin. So this will be a good time um, to show you um, how we do that to kind of keep down expenses and also the method the, the method that I kind of borrowed from a permaculture method of putting the slice of, well, you should put straw if you don't want a cover crop of hay, but I put hay because that's what we have from our bunny and I just put that in. It's, it's fabulous doing it this method. They're never water stressed. They, they seem to always be getting an even amount of moisture. So I really recommend this method. This is the first summer we've tried it. Obviously it's for summer we've had to bend. So, but you, just to show you, you can kind of borrow in a suburban, small suburban garden, um, some permaculture methods that really work. They really reduce the amount of water you're using, which is really important. Um, I don't feel like I have to run out here in water and it's great. It's, it's also great for the environment to try to conserve as much water as possible. Um, yeah, so we'll get started. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna harvest all the leaves that are still good for eating. it all cleared out I'm gonna remove um, maybe a barrow full of soil just so I can get under there and turn and put I'm gonna I'll show you I'm going to um, cut up all those greens I just took out with my lawnmower and separate the leaves from the, the stalks the stalks I'll cut up manually but and um, run them over with the, the mower out back and um, then incorporate them to the bottom and just allow uh, the bottom of this barrel to act as a composter. Uh, it's, it's a great way to compost. Another place you can compost some of your, your um, leaf matter and not create smell and odors in a small suburban garden. So we'll get started. Yes, she's been helping.
this point, I put in all the organic matter that I wanted to put in and I dug a canal in the middle. And now I'm going to put um, a slice of hay throughout the middle. And that's what's going to act as something that holds moisture over a longer period of time than the regular soil. And so we'll get started on that. Basically, this is what you do. You take your slice. And I just pull it across into my canal. I don't put bury it all the way. I want it up towards the surface and just maybe a few inches on top of it. So hopefully you can see that pretty well. Next, I'm gonna add the soil back on top that I took out earlier. So that's it. This is how I set up my bins. So these are the before, and I'll show you what, how the plants look and how they grow doing it by this method. Okay, so to give you perspective, it's Wednesday, let's see, August 4th. And these bins were done in May, I believe, but maybe not, maybe it was June, I'm not sure. I thought it was May and then, yes, it was, and then we had other things planted in them. And then I got my summer stuff in late, so it wasn't until the third week of June that I put in the peppers and tomatoes. So they went in late, so we'll have a later crop. And they're, so they've been in, I guess, since the third week of June. And the plants are so strong. We took off, we are growing a lot of leaves. So if that's, and I'm not pruning them at all. So there's two methods of, you know, some people prune them, some people don't. Um, but we have tons of peppers and we'll have more peppers than we'll need off of these plants. We just took, oh gosh, probably eight off yesterday or no, two days ago. And you can see they're just everywhere. They're inside the plant, they're everywhere. So even though it's producing a lot of leaves, it's also producing a lot of peppers. Um, and you see how green and healthy these leaves look in August, which never happens for us. We always have by now a lot of fungus and a lot of disease. And then these are beefsteak tomatoes. And there's some kale growing off the edge there. And again, the beefsteak tomatoes are growing very tall. We don't do the, um, the, so I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you need to take off the, the suckers and all that. Um, there's two methods, two schools of thought. There are people who prune them and there are people who aren't pruning them and both love their methods. I've never pruned them. I can't be bothered. I'm not going to lie. I have so much to do in a day. I have a job. I have, you know, my business to run and I just don't have time to do endless pruning. We're going to get more tomatoes than we can handle because these will put out all at the same time. We're starting to get our first really huge beefsteak tomatoes. 
Um, I'm pretty excited about it. My husband's excited. We did take off some green um, tomatoes that were quite sizable the other day um, to pickle them because we like green tomatoes, but it's producing tomatoes like crazy. If you can see how huge that tomato is, but they're growing amazing. There's not even signs of real disease at the bottoms of the plants. There's no water stress signs. The leaves are not yellowing. And these have only been growing probably, I guess now it's been seven weeks. But you see, look at the kale. I mean, it's August. And usually my greens bolt and tank. And look at how beautiful that kale plant is. Gorgeous kale. So I'll be trying not to harvest too much of it now that I've taken out all the greens and I'm starting new. There's a, a tomato, cherry tomato plant that grows vine, vines of tomatoes, and that's just started to produce. It's only been in this pot maybe four weeks. Yeah, so that's basically what you'll grow out of doing this, this method. The plants just seem so much happier, so much healthier. Again, production matters. So I haven't really gotten to the point where I can actually tell you what they'll produce throughout a whole season. So I can update you on that later. Okay, so I'm gonna get planting these two bins with the new, the new greens and veggies. And then I'll show you the after. gonna crush the new baby she'll be she'll be doing a little damage herself but that's okay um, she's doing well and hopefully she'll enjoy living here we'll see all right well thanks for watching I hope you got some tips um, hopefully you can get a few ideas for how to make these really work for you where you don't have to be out here fertilizing all the time watering all the time and I'm telling you what that our hay strip in the middle works great if you do not have uh, water set up to them uh, I never have to Thanks worry for watching I hope you have a great day